Our okay, SDP, I'm assuming that's Stuart. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So I I would, sorry, I'm late. All right, thank you. But thank you for sending the email earlier today, uh, giving us the heads up. So, um, so we've been waiting. Okay, um, so yes, I'd like to call to order the, um, the July 11th, 2022 Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency uh, regular business meeting at 7.22 p.m. Um, I'd like to have a roll call of members present. Um, I'll begin, Mark Parker, Chairman. Bill Berwinski, Vice Chairman. Marlo Butts, Secretary. Stuart and, Peasley. Yes, I'd like to seat Stuart Peasley as alternate uh, as being on the, the board tonight so that we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, like to uh, just do a quick review of uh, last the minutes of last month's meeting. Um, I received it in my packet, uh, I don't know if the rest of you have or not. Um, any uh, comments, questions, revisions? Bill Rowinski, I have uh, several on page two, Roman numeral six new applications under A, on uh, number three, uh, the Kathy Ellison Lake Bungie the tax district board member stated that the dock must be removable and that a driveway bond is required, probably insert by the Lake Bungie dis tax, dis tax district. So inserting the word by between required and the. Is, is Bungie spelled correctly? For the lake it is, for, uh... the, road, for the road it's not. Is it one G? Um, well, that's that 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 I don't know. I don't recall one G or two Gs. No, it's two according to the tax district. There's three different spellings of Bungie. There's B U N G A Y, and and some use two Gs and some use don't. But that is the correct one. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> and then on uh, page four. Um, we'll be under letter F and further down, like three lines up from, uh, the number two, it says grassy land from further settling, um, that might have been intended to mean er be eroding, although settling could be part of that because of the erosion also. So I don't know if we even want to change that one. And the other thing is in number three on the same page, uh, Jean Pillow, her last name has two L's. But anybody else have anything? I did not. Marla, but speaking. I looked through. I, I, I don't know. I think that uh, there's some grammar and spelling issues. That's about it. I looked through it earlier today. I don't remember specifically, but just in general, I would say that uh, Amy, you might want to check that do a spell check or review it one more time before you send it out. Just a suggestion. Um, yeah. Bill, I'd like to go back to that first one that you caught. So so uh, under on, on page four, uh, under letter, letter F, uh, Roman numeral I. Um, so the goal is to stabilize the erosion of the banks on the north side of the brook to prevent grassy land from further was it maybe from further flooding uh, or further? I'm just trying to remember what we were trying to say there by stabilizing that the bank, 
what's it going to prevent? Is it going to prevent the, the grassy land from settling or from it'll, flooding? It'll, or, yeah. it'll, it'll, eroding. Eroding, yeah. Eroding. To stabilize the, the bank erosion, was eroding. To stabilize the erosion, the erosion on the banks to prevent grassy land from further eroding. I think it was further flooding because he was because the flooding was coming off of the brook and onto the land, right? And and toward the house, and he's trying to prevent that. Right? Is, That's what I that is, doesn't make this sense. Is, this is the fairgrounds. I, you guys, oh, I can check the audio and pick the word that he used. I'll go and review the audio and adjust it according to the words that he used. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just trying to, I was trying to remember the conversation, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it was either from the, the grassy land from settling. Or, you know, I mean, and as it settles, then it would flood. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I All right. Oh, yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody else have a comment? Oh, Bill Rowinski, I make a motion that we uh, accept the minutes as amended for the June. 7th, 20, 2022 meeting. I second that motion, Marlo Betts. The motion's been made by Bill Rowinski, seconded by Marla Butts uh, to uh, accept uh, the minutes of the June 7th, 2022 meeting as corrected. Uh, and, and Amy will follow up on, the, on that, uh, on the re-listening to the recording. Um, so we'll make any adjustments to that particular sentence as needed. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? So moved. Okay. All right. Pending applications. We have application 04-22-15 BLH Properties, 170 Lion Hill Road, a two-lot subdivision uh, received on 5222. So Paul, is that the one you're handling for us? Yes, it is. Okay, go ahead. Um, so we've made some corrections to the plan. Today, um, we also received um, Health department approval today. So you, um, Ashley should have got that in the mail. And a couple of the things we've done, it, if you've noticed, if you um, if you can zoom up top a little bit, you can you can see that one of the things is the neighbor across the street, which is basically to the east of us, asked us if we could move the driveway down southerly so it's not directly across from their driveway. So the Grand Gambants. So we Garibrand, moved, yeah. Garibrand, we moved the driveway down. Out. Out. So the other thing we've done is the engineer has designed it as you can see the swale and the pipes that are basically on this side of the stone wall. And the intent of this is to collect all the water prior to reaching the road. All right. And the other big thing we do, if you head a little east, According to Marla Butts, what we looked at is we ran a French drain basically along the, the westerly side of the proposed gravel driveway, which is going to collect all the water coming down from the north, the westerly side, which with two pipes shooting across into some little level spreaders there. The other thing that has been added to the existing driveways is the plan, the last time we were at planning and zoning, they requested a couple little passing lanes. So we've widened the, we've widened the, um, the gravel driveway in two places to allow for a passing drain. Um, other than, and the other thing that we did is over in the northerly corner, you can see there was a, one of the abutters was a lady by the name of Waldron. He has, nope, go the other way to the north. 
There, okay. right there. Christine Waldron has approached our guy and is willing to buy almost a half an acre of land right there, that little triangular piece. So we're going to be doing a boundary line modification and adding 0.42 acres to Mrs. Waldron's property. So, I mean, other than that, I think the map is pretty much very similar to the one that you saw without with the with the corrections that we've made. So we we're trying to in, um, we did a French drain that's going to be along the westerly side of the proposed drive, the long driveway going up. We're also proposing to intercept all the water before it reaches Lions Road and shoots it that way. And the main thing was is we move one of the one of the proposed driveways down a little bit to help accommodate the neighbor across the street. And the other outstanding thing that we had was waiting for approvals from the Northeast Health Department and that came through today. This is Marla Butt speaking. I have a question for Ashley. Ashley. Hi. What was the fee that you charged for this? Um, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to let you know when I have the file in front of me tomorrow. We went, we paid it for, it's a three lot subdivision. We, it's a, we had it corrected to a three lot subdivision. The so, um, actually was $95. Remember I was $5 short? That was for Underwood Road, I think. I don't think that was for this one. The subdivisions are a little bit more. Okay. So here's my question to, to the commission is, um, this is a subdivision that's proposing regulated activities in at least two lots, correct, Paul? Yes. Yes. So it's a three lot subdivision with one property already existing with two new lots with two houses, which means there's two approvals that are for one for each lot. Now it's difficult or if not impossible to transfer uh, a piece of a permit. This is one permit. So it's not like a conceptual approval where the commission is giving approval. This is actual an individual permit for two properties. Um, I can't see how if, if, if the developer, if BLH Properties sells off a lot to somebody else, there is no authorization. And I would, would not support the authorization for the transfer of a partial permit. So they'd have to come back and apply for a new permit for the work in the Upland Review area for whichever lot gets sold to somebody else. Um, BLH properties, if they build both properties, they wouldn't have to worry about that. But if they are not building both, if they're doing this on speculation and to sell the lot separately, each one would then have to come back for a wetlands agent approval, separate fee. In this case, the Planning and Zoning Commission is getting an opinion of the commission of this three lot subdivision. But it, the question then becomes is what is actually covered under that permit and, and who gets to do that work? Do you understand my problem? Yes. I believe, I believe the intent of BLH, and I, would, I, I wish Bill was supposed to be on here. Bill is going to build both houses. Yeah, he is not gonna be selling the lots. Okay, so, I would so this application, so this application is for approval for doing work in the Upland Review areas for both lots, correct? correct? Yes, and I believe you're absolutely correct. If Bill sells it, then whoever buys it would have to come back in front of you to get approvals for that lot that, that he sold. Mark, do you see what my concern is? Right. Yes, we would need to know, I think, in my opinion, we would need to know from Bill, BLH, is he going to build 
all of this and then sell the the finished house and, and lot and septic or is he thinking of you know set, you know presenting this as the conceptual design and then once once he's he has a buyer to sell the land and then if he decides to build after that you know then he would have to do separate two separate uh permits again like i said paul archer archer surveying bill's bill's intent is to build two houses on this pro on these properties and that's the way i would like the commission to move forward is with that hit as his intent and i totally understand where you're coming from if he sells the lot it is not a transferable because it's the BLH. So, so what Ashley, I, yes. on the fee structure, on the fee structure, if somebody comes in with a seven lot subdivision and there's work on seven of the lots, yep. is the fee is still the same ninety five dollars? No, I believe you charge them per lot. Like not the state fee, okay. but the whatever fee we have. Um, you know, for this type of application. And I don't know off the top of my head, but I will definitely look tomorrow in the folder. Yeah, because the copy that I, that we got in the mail last month didn't have the fee on it. it right. So I don't, I don't know what the fee was that was charged. Hold on, I want to make more. sure the town gets its money. Yep. For multiple lots. Yep. Right. So yeah, we'll give Paul, He's, he's looking to see if he can get that, that paperwork. Um, but, but again, I, in my mind, it, if he paid to, for the builder to build the two houses and their septic and everything, you know, and in, as in this application, uh, and then later, then he sells, you know, one or two of the lots, but it's, he's selling the, the project as already completed. So, you know, that if he's doing it that way, then I could see approving, you know, this application. But if he was going to sell them before doing the project, then yes, he, he would have to submit a separate permit uh, application for each of the buildings. So actually what we can do is if we decide that this is acceptable, then we can condition the approval that's, uh, that states that um, this permit is not transferable um, and that new applications must be submitted should the properties be sold and proposed to be built by parties other than the applicant. We, um, it would have to be a condition of the approval. We paid $190 for the wetlands permit. So that's 190. So that meant 60 went to the state. That means 130 came to the town to pay for the legal notice and the processing of the application. So if a single lot, if there was only one lot that had work in, in the Upland Review area, then it would have been 60 plus 75. No, yeah, no, 65, $65. Right. Does that make sense on the fee schedule, yes. Ashley? Yeah. Okay. So for a wetlands agent approval, we're basically charging 60 plus $65 Correct. for- Correct. Yep. Because I've seen applications come through with $95 and that's why I'm just kind of wondering what the difference is. Um, I have to pull it up. Give me one second. Well, if it was ninety-five dollars for one of the other applications for one lot, and this 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 one is for one hundred and ninety dollars, then that would be two lots, right? That's correct. The last one we did, we did another one for you guys on Underwood Road at the basically the same time, and that was we paid a check of ninety-five dollars for that one for one lot. 
And that was for so the state and, gets 60, the state gets 60 and we get 35. And that's probably not going to cover the cost of the legal notice. So we have to look at the fees that we're charging. Legal notices are cost for a single legal notice. I don't I'm not sure what Ashley you're you're getting charged by Stonebridge Press, but I've been paying around forty four dollars um, for a single approval, a wetlands agent approval. Yes, yeah, our so we need to look at the pricing that we're doing on our fees, right? Because we're losing money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right now, we're if if we approve this, then we'd be giving an announcement for the two lots, you know. And if sixty five <laughs> goes to the if sixty five goes to the state, then that leaves a hundred and twenty five. Sixty. Sixty. Oh, sixty dollars goes, to, goes the to the state. So then the, then right. that would then that would leave one hundred and thirty dollars for the wetlands agent and for the advertising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the fee is, is, is already set. We can't change that, but yep. we have to think about the future. I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking in my head as to are we charging enough for our applications to cover our costs? But for this one, I have no problem. I mean, the fees are set by the regulations, so we can't change that now. Um, but there would be two lots that would be authorized for work on it. And I have no problem approving this with a condition that um, this authorization is not transferable on a lot by lot basis. Right. So shall I move? Yes. So I'm moved to approve application 04-22-15 BLH properties, 170 Lion Hill Road, says it's three lot subdivision for work on two lots in the Upland Review area on the condition that no lot may be transferred independently uh, under this permit. Motion's been made by Marla Butts and seconded by Bill Ruinski to approve application 04. Mm -hmm. what was, it? was it Bill or Stewart? It was Stewart, sorry. All right, okay. Seconded by Stuart Peasley. Um, application 04-22-15 um, to, um, to approve uh, the application um, with the, uh, the condition that uh, uh, the, the, it's the, the, if there's any trans, there's no transferring of, uh, of uh, the application. No, yeah. no single lot may be transferred. No single lot the, may be transferred, permit. correct. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, Paul, for all your work and your patience. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. Okay, application 06-22-18, Michael Grenier, 399 Roseland Park Road, working in an Upland Review area, wetlands, uh, received 6-6-2022. Um, so Michael Grenier is, um, they're gonna have to table this for tonight. They did get an engineer, but they're working on plans. Uh, the engineer is very backed up, so they hope to be back next month. Okay. Mark, I, I would like to have Ashley request the applicant withdraw the application for resubmission within 90 days um, and to waive the fee because he's already paid the fee, correct, Ashley? Correct. So um, I would rather not have it on our plate um, that, he wait, that, that he withdraw the application and resubmit uh, within 90 days. And if that is uh, un unable to do that, then he notify us that um, what his timetable is for resubmission. Um, by the way, I drove by there, I think it was yesterday, and I saw that there was a, some new material that looked like it had been dumped into the detention area. Um, so 
he should be cautioned to cease any further work um, in the area of the detention and within 100 feet of any mapped wetlands. We can't force him to withdraw the application, but next month we're forced to render a decision on the application because this was work in wetlands and it was applied for at last meeting. And let's see, the receipt date was 6-6-22. So we are now, at, we will be at a point next month to have to render a decision. And if, you have, if I have to remend, render a decision on what we currently have before us, I would be recommending denial. And there's no recovery of that application fee. But if he withdraws the application at, by next month's meeting, then I would uh, recommend that he be required to reapply um, um, and we'll waive the application fee for that since he's already paid it. But he has to reapply within 90 days from his withdrawal date. Okay. So otherwise I would suggest that we table this to next month with a request that um, he notify us of it. We notify him of our interest to have him withdraw the application and resubmit within 90 days and that we would waive the application fee. Okay. I can make that as a motion if you wish, but I don't know how everybody else feels. Okay with me, Bill that's, that's my recommendation, Marla. So go ahead and make the uh, table it with the, re with the condition. Okay. Uh, I move that application 06-22-18, Michael Grenier, two, six, excuse me, 399 Roseland Park Road for work in the Upland Revere and Wetlands, which was received on June 6th, 2022, be tabled till next month's meeting with notification being sent by the wetlands agent to Mr. Grenier that if he should withdraw his application prior to next month meeting and agree to resubmit within 90 days and not do any further work in wetlands or the upland review area during that time, that the commission will waive the application fee for the resubmission of the application. A second a motion. Motion has been made by Marla Butts, seconded by Stuart Peasley uh, to table this to next month's meeting for application 06-22-18 um, with the, uh, the conditions that, uh, uh, that we send a, a notification that uh, we, if they re withdraw uh, and resubmit, uh, we will uh, waive the, uh, uh, the application fee. And uh, I'll trust and do that no work. And, and do no and work. Do no work. Right. And do no more work until we uh, uh, we address it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And Amy, you can catch that uh, from the minutes uh, that you're recording. So very good. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. So moved. Okay. All right, under Roman numeral six, new applications. Uh, we have application 06-22-25, Jeremy Newrath, 24 Beaver Dam, fix erosion, removal of tree stumps and trees and stumps. So have we got uh, anyone representing? Is that Jeremy on the iPhone 13 or who have we got? <laughs> yep, it's Jeremy here. All right, there we go. <laughs> Do we need any more information from uh, from Jeremy? Uh, we got enough information. 
Do we have a site plan showing what the extent of the disturbance would be? Uh, we do not. We just have the pictures that I have online. I don't have any measurements as to what the extent of the work is, how close to the water body they're going. Um, this is insufficient information to render an informed decision. All right. I do have measurements. Um, I will be operating, disturbing the ground 80 feet away from the water. So what I'm thinking, so, Jeremy, is maybe if you could draw up a map and with the, you know, a kind of a site plan and the measurements, and if you could submit that, uh, you know, within the month so that we can, you know, look at it and render a decision next month. Well, um, my, my belief is, is that he's not in wetlands or water courses. He's only in the 125 foot upland review area for the water body. Yep. So it's really a wetlands agent approval. So like we've done in the past, we could authorize Ashley to sign off on this, providing she receives a drawing showing right. the extent of the grading work to prove that it's there's no work close to the wetlands or excuse me, close to the water course. Um, and that proper erosion and sediment controls will be used to stabilize to protect the water body from siltation. Right. And then Jeremy, that way we then have it in our records in the folder um for the wetlands uh for the wetlands agent to make a decision okay yeah I'll, I'll be installing a silt fence and hay bales as needed um there should be no disturbance towards the water um because everything will be closed up um before rainstorms or anything in that nature um i'll have the <laughs> site plan drawn up this week and presented to ashley and payment will also be following that for the 95 dollars so I have a question. I see you have a wood chipper in one of your photographs. Would you ever consider using a wood chipper along the edge of disturbance? No, the wood chipper is the homeowners. Um, that won't be in any part of the uh, job. Okay. It's just that yeah, because I'll be removing you can use wood brush and also mm -hmm. removing a tree and then stumps, everything will be removed from the property and mm -hmm. not um, shipped and spread. How will you be removing the stumps? Will you be using a heavy machine or will you be grinding them in place? I'll be using an excavator. Okay. Yes, yeah, so and you're gonna have to install some kind of control to protect the lid. Yes, yeah. Yep, there'll be silt fence um, installed below the, the work being done. And then for whatever there is for leftover dips in the ground, I'll be bringing in gravel and loom to top everything to dress it off and seed it right away so it can prevent erosion. Mm -hmm. Mark, I don't have any, I don't know how, how anybody else feels, but I have no problem with having Ashley process this as a wetlands agent approval, providing she gets a, a drawing showing the extent of the disturbance and the erosion and sediment controls to be used during the, the stabilization of the site, restabilization of the site. Yeah. Oh, it's okay with me, Bill Rowinski. All right. I'll uh, entertain you, the, a motion to a motion to give uh, the wetlands yes. agent approval of authorization. Yep. Okay, I guess I'll do it. I move to um, I move the application 06-22-25 by Jeremy Nureth uh, for 24 Beaver Dam Road. Is that Beaver Dam Road? Um, to yes. fix erosion, remove trees and stump, uh, and restabilize, um, be processed as a wetlands agent approval, providing the wetlands agent receives a drawing showing the extent of land disturbance on the lot and the erosion controls to be placed for protecting the water body 
uh, downslope from the proposed activity. I'll second that, Bill Rowinski. Motion has been made by Marla Butts, seconded by Bill Rowinski to um, process uh, this application, application uh, 06-22-25 as a wetlands agent approval, provided uh, site plan uh, maps and measurements are provided and uh, et cetera, as stated by Marla. Um, any further questions, discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? So moved. Okay. And we have a timber harvest notification um, from Austin Harmon, uh, MBLU 5173-02-29E, Pole Bridge Road. Uh, form has been filled out. Map provided showing the property boundaries, the landing sites, wetland crossings, skid trail, drainage. Any questions from any of the members? First, of, first Marla Butt speaking. Um, Paul Forest products should inform all of their staff to use the proper form. This is not the correct form. Um, this is the notification form. The following application for Jeffrey Holloway uses the correct form, um, which has a sign off on it for the commission's use. Um, that's the first thing on this uh, for Austin. Second, what is the method of the stream crossing? You don't give any details of how you plan to cross the stream. Are you doing a ford? Are you doing a temporary bridge? What are you doing? Hi, Austin Harmon online. Um, thank you for bringing up the uh, change in forms, Marla. Um, I did um, understand that after the fact, um, once I sent in the other one for Mike Bartlett, um, I did was not aware that there was a separate form for the town of Woodstock. So I will keep that in my consideration for the future. Um, and for the drainage, um, it's specific in here that it's a drainage, not a stream. At the moment, it's, um, it's perfectly dry. Um, it only flows when the wetland fills up and has enough water in it to flow down the hillside into the other swamp that's off the, off the property. Um, the form that we will be using uh, for crossing will, if we do cross it, indeed, will uh, be uh, temporary bridge mats um, and then corduroy for the okay. approach of bridge mats. But, uh, for the wetland crossings themselves that are already there, um, I got approval from Ashley to put those in as harvest is already underway besides in the wetlands and review area on the dry spots of the property. Mm -hmm. Um, I did send her pictures that she can throw on if you guys would like to see. Um, there's corduroy used to fill in the crossings. The wetlands at the moment are perfectly dry with brush on the approaches and then um, big corduroy pieces in the middle that will be removed post-harvest. Stuart Peasley here, where's, where's the uh, landing? Where's the wood beam uh, collected? Stuart, take a look at the drawing. If there's a, a, a red star, and that's the landing next oh, to okay. Polbridge Road. Oh, all right. On the, all right. On, the west, okay. on, on the west side of the property, right next to Polbridge Road. All right. I didn't see that. Yep. Got it. Ashley, is this the one that you called me on uh, about yes. wanting to know whether or not somebody could start without doing work in wetlands? Yep. And I said, yes, as long as they're not doing work in wetlands, they can certainly start. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, luckily we're in a dry period, but if we get some heavy rains and stuff, it's going to, you might have to do some kind of crossing that that's more stable, but as long as it's dry, I don't see that as being a problem. I would prefer to have some kind of protection for the bed, but um, if it's pre completely dry, uh, at this time and not subject to um, 
earth movement, I think the temporary grid map uh, should be should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the strip on the on the west side is you know probably the dry you know pretty dry now. On the east on the east side is where there's a looks like it might be an intermittent stream or whatever. Yeah, intermittent water course. Mm -hmm. so, I don't listen. have any problem with this request other than what I've stated. So um, I don't see following the paper chase of supplying a new notification of timber harvest, but I don't know where there's a signature. There's no signature block on this for the commission to approve it. But I think by virtue of having it in our, our minutes that we have found it acceptable should be adequate for the purposes of processing it. Yep. Yep, and I'll I'll just I'll just point out that on on page two of of the uh, the yellow the yellow form that we have here uh, on where it says describe in further detail as necessary, um, he does say that there will be one wetland crossing and one drainage crossing, where timber bridges and or corduroy will be used as necessary. Uh, so. Is that language sufficient, Marla, for what you were looking for? Well, not exactly, because oh, he's got okay. two crossings, and and one of them was obviously clearly, you know, it's dry now, so that corduroy might be appropriate, you know, most appropriate. But for the other one, which might be an intermittent water course, it might work with a, a, a with a corduroy, but it might also work with a temporary bridge. You don't know. So right. it's best to decide what you want to do um, ahead of time. Yeah. Of course, he's doing it during the dry part of the year. So, because um, he says he's starting, or uh, already started. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't, and we're in a drought. So I don't, I don't see that's going to be a problem now, as long as they finish. Um, I don't know how long you figure it's going to take to finish. Um, yep, I'm, I'm here. Um, weather depending, obviously, as you were saying, you know, I'm hoping that the dry weather stays here for um, the near future that we can get for a moment. Um, I, I believe the property should be wrapped up in uh, no more than a month, give or take something along oh, those that's lines. That's nothing. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're at the low flow time of the year, so that's probably perfectly fine. Perfect. Ashley, you should assign numbers to these timber harvest notifications. So we have a file for them. Okay. Okay. Yep. Anytime somebody comes in with a request for a ruling, there should be a file created for it. So we have record of it somewhere. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a file location, you're not going to be able to find it down the road. Okay. So I was going to move to approve the request for the timber harvest under application blah, 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 but there is no application blah, blah, blah. So I will. Okay. The application, move, yeah. I'll move to uh, approve the timber harvest. A uh, request by Austin Harmon for map block block 5173-02-29E on Pole Bridge Road as, as notified. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Motion's been made by Marla Butts, seconded by Stuart Peasley. Um, to approve the uh, timber harvest notification uh, uh, by Austin Harmon, um, as so noted for map block uh, land unit. Um, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. All right. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Okay, we have um, another timber harvest notification um, from Jeffrey Hallowell. 
um, MBLU uh, 5783-69-08 on Rocky Hill Road, up of Rocky Hill Road, okay. Um, as Martin, Marlon noted before, it's got uh, the, the form that we would like to use that uh, would allow me to sign off on it. Um, any questions or comments on this application or on this notification? Let's see, Cutler Hill Road. I have a question for, for Mike Bartlett. Mike, I know you're there or you were. Um, I see you're, you're calling for uh, portable bridges for the stream crossings. Do you have water flowing through those streams now? There we go. Okay, there we go. I didn't realize I had to unmute myself. <laughs> I might apologize. Yep. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, there is no water. There hasn't been any one on the easterly one since the beginning of May. Uh, the SC2, I'm not sure. I haven't been out there in the last month. I that one is a little more of a, a stream course, so to speak. Uh, that one's normally, well, back in April that, you know, the stream was about six feet wide there, something along those lines. I don't, there it may be down to next to nothing at this point, but um, my intention is to bridge it anyways, you know, in both cases, use a bridge just in case a storm event. So, you know, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure, so. Yeah, I agree. But Mike, the, um, um, the, the landing uh, noted uh, there on the Griggs, Griggs Trail section, yeah. it, um, is, that on, is that on Hallowell's property or is that no, on No, it, it, is, it is noted in the application. It is on the land of Concato and we have permission from Concato to put that landing there. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. If you looked at in the further detail, describe in further detail, it does note that there. And that's there we go. Okay, thank you. I, I, yep. I missed that. Okay. It's a historically that's what Jeff has used to access the property. And we did we did a treatment there, uh, an improvement thinning, taking out mainly firewood about 20 years ago, and use that same same area. So got it. mentioned and Mark. I didn't notice until tonight um, the northern end of the parcel that goes out to Rocky Hill Road there is a wetland feature there you can kind of see may be able to note a change in the forest cover there where it gets a little lighter that's quite a bit of that is a wetland we're not going to be in we should have I should have a harvest boundary going across the property there on that north end but there's a wetland feature there that we we're not going into and we're not crossing so Right, yeah, I see that 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 one like leg kind of heading heading north off of the top the top of the loop, and yeah. then it just kind of stops there. And I looks like yeah. a little white lighter area there, and then a little yeah, bit it's a little lighter up to the north here. That yeah. that yeah. right, the northwest corner is not a wetland, but the north, you know, from the center of the property, and it extends down to that jog in the line on the western boundary. There's a wetland right. feature there, but we're not. Right. As I said, we're not going into that, not crossing it. Right. Hey, I've done my share of approvals tonight. Somebody else do it. <laughs> Again, there's no number, but um, you don't have to have it as long as you you guys clearly identify the request form. All right, this is Bill Rowinski. I move that we approve the timber harvest of uh, Jeffrey Hollowell, MBLU 
5783-69-08 Rocky Hill Road and MBLU 6391-69-13A Cutler Hill Road and MBLU 6391-69-14 Cutler Hill Road. Right in the motion. Motion's been made by Bill Rowinski, seconded by Stuart Pisley. Uh, to approve uh, the, no the not timber harvest notification for the said mentioned uh, MBLU uh, uh, blocks um, off of Rocky Hill Road and Cutler Hill Road. Um, any further questions, discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? So moved. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Michael. If I can interject really quick. Um, I don't ahead. know if you guys would be willing to move up citizens comments. Um, I know we have a citizen. Uh, they called me today. They, they had some questions about some work on their property. Um, so I just didn't know if we could move that up so they didn't have to listen to all of our administrative business. Mark, I move to uh, move citizens comments item eight to just before item seven, administrative business. Second by Bill Rowinski. Motion has been made by Marla, Marla Butt, seconded by Bill Rowinski to move uh, citizens comments uh, forward on the agenda or uh, up on the agenda uh, to replace, to be ahead of uh, of uh, seven, administrative business. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so moved. Okay, citizens comments. By the way, before we get the citizens comments, maybe that should be just for, did you say that it's just for this meeting or are you gonna be Mm -hmm. Okay. So just for this meeting. This okay. is just an, the an agenda, agenda is set by the bylaws. Okay. Right. I know he's there. I think his computer might be frozen. So just give him a second. Oh, Michael Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonder if there's a way of notifying him. <laughs> He may not realize that he's frozen. Right. Give him a shout out, Mark. Call him. Um, there he is. Oh. Chat, let's see. Do we have a chat option here that we can or Ashley, as you as host, can you send them something? Um, that's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, now it just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's reconnecting. All right. All right. Oh, Mr. Parker. Okay, you're a little you're a little glitchy, but uh, I just heard you. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Got a little bit. 
Maybe he can call in on the phone. On the phone. If you can like hear us, easy. Mike, yeah, could you call in on on maybe on a cell phone or something? Um, yes, we'll do. Um, see, uh... Michael, try try uh, turning your video off. Maybe it's you're just chewing up a lot of megabytes. Maybe if you just go to audio, we might be able to hear you. Okay, just 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 keep it on audio. Don't turn your video on. Can you speak again? Ah. Well, it was worth a try. Okay, can you hear me now, Mr. Very glitchy. Okay, you know, Mr. Parker. Yeah, but again, it's it's glitchy. Maybe if you speak slowly. <laughs> no, just, no, that's not good. Um, the close number. No, it's just not coming through, Mike. Yeah. And on um. Ashley, can you tell us what it's about? What the concern is? Yes. Um, um, they have a pond on their property that they have some concerns with. Um, I believe they want to clean it out some. Um, I briefly spoke to them today. Um, I, I didn't understand if the pond was connected to a culvert in a town road or not. Um, so they had some questions on, you know, how to move forward with that. What's the address? Um, 211 Synexit Road. Okay. I talked to Missy today. She okay. uh, apparently was unable to reach John Navarro. Of course, he's left. And um, she was able to touch base with Terry Bellman, who gave who was the former building inspector in Woodstock and is now the building inspector in Thompson. Okay. And he, she, he gave her my name. And so I spoke to her this afternoon. Um, and the concern that she has, she's at 211 Synexic. There is a, a small pond that receives runoff coming down. Oh, he's back. He's got a better connection, looks like. How's that, Can you Mr. Hear me? Parker? I can, Marla. That's better. Good. Yep. That's much better. Oh, much oh better. great. Yeah, I could. Um, I've I've been able to hear, um, and 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 um, observe everything so far. So I must have just been in a, in an area of the house that uh, didn't didn't have a great Wi-Fi for for you all to hear us. So. So why don't you explain to the commission? Uh, you know, when you got the property, what it was like, what's happened since then, what your concerns are. Sure. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, we appreciate it. Um, Missy and I moved to um, 211 Synexit in November of 2018. And there's a, um, you know, beautiful pond, um, on the on the border of the property and it runs under a culvert that goes under Synexit Road, under Woodland Road, and eventually ends up in Roseland Lake. Um, and in 2020, we had that terrible drought 
and Mr. Salvis that lives across the street um, said to me, and, and the pond was dry, it, ha it had gone bone dry. And Mr. Salvis said, oh my goodness, he said, I've lived here for nearly 40 years, I've never seen the pond dry. So I went down to investigate a little bit and it, it is a man-made pond. And I, we discovered that um, over the years, there has been some erosion to the man-made structure and it has created a new low point for the water to, um, to bypass and go across the road. Uh, last year, you know, we had a, a tremendous, uh, rain over the spring and the summer and the the pond never emptied um, but we were getting two to three inches of rain every week um, but now it is it's dry again and and I was wondering what I would need to do or or what would be the proper process to go through to see if I could repair that and and get the pond back to to normal, it is. It's um, you know, it's quite a haven for wildlife. There's a tremendous amount of wildlife that um, that uses the pond. We have ducks. We had a family of cranes here. We have loads of frogs and turtles, and um, um, you know, so it's just such a great feature for wildlife. And I, I just wanted to know what would be the proper way to get that repaired. Mike, is there an existing, um, was there an existing either weir or, you know, a, a kind of a, a low spot or opening in the embankment, you know, that the water would come across and then, and then drop down into that gully and go under the, under Sun Exit Road. And now you're saying that the water got so high that it actually broke through another spot and created another spot to go through? No, there, no, there was an existing or there, correction, there is an existing um, concrete structure there. Um, I have been told um, that years and years ago that there was actually a spinning wheel there that um, I don't know if it was for decoration. I think that I have the spinning wheel that on my property as a decoration. I tried to ask, um, you know, some people that have been in town for many, many years. No one remembers it um but yes there is an existing concrete structure there with um boards so you could adjust the level of the pond however at the end just over time and and nature has eroded its own way so nature has created its own low spot so outlet. where the yeah. yes, so where the concrete structure ends over time, you know, Mother Nature has created her own little way to go down to the spillway, and it runs to the culvert that goes under Synexit Road. So it's so naturally the pond empties all. You know, when when we have drought conditions such as we have now, the pond empties. So Marla, I don't know if this if this pond would you know if that would have ever been recorded uh, with the DEP you know dam records because you know it probably hasn't. It's such a small little pond. Um, yeah. So, so the answer to the question is no. It would have classified as a there is an embankment and there is a spillway, but it doesn't. It's its potential failure would not cause a threat to life or property. The embankment right. of the road at that location is much higher than the water body. Um, so if it were to fail, it would just have, it would get down to the cross culvert. It wouldn't wash out the road. It's not gonna threaten anybody's life. It's not gonna right. cause any property damage to other people downstream. The culvert will act as the control to let the outlet through. Um, my recollection is, is about five or six years ago, I remember seeing some work because I live up the street from that. And that's the way I go down to Putnam. And somebody was playing around uh, probably just before they went to sell that property uh, a, couple, a year or two before they did some work along the embankment there. 
Um, and it was at the time when we didn't really have much of a wet, you know, that's when Tina was leaving. So that would have been what, three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. Um, and they stabilized it with, you know, they, they did some work on the embankment and then they stabilized it in grass and it looked really nice. Um, but I thought about it at the time. I said, well, I can't see any environment, you know, adverse environmental impact. And we had such a problem trying to do work at that time that I just, I said, okay, once it's stabilized, they got it stabilized real fast. I said, I'm not going to worry about it. But apparently the way they repaired it was not sufficient. So it's probably been overtopping in, in high flows. Um, and the upper watershed is not developed. It comes off of Bull Hill. And there could be some minor changes going on up there because there has been some timber harvesting going on. But two years ago, we had a really bad drought. I had a number of ponds in, in Woodstock and Thompson that were drying up and people were dredging them out because they were so dry. And, um, and in this case, because you've only lived there a couple of years, you would have seen that drought and dry up. Um, but because it overtops and it's eroding a new outflow, so to speak, um, it's, it's not allowing the pond to hold its water the way it did before. So when I spoke with Missy earlier today, I, I suggested to her that this was gonna maybe wanna have an engineer take a look at it because the watershed, if you look at um, the, the topography, I don't know what the watershed is. So I don't know what the capacity of that spillway should be in order for it not to overtop the embankment and eroded the embankment out. Um, I don't know if the Eastern Connecticut Conservation District has any ability to help them out as a homeowner because it's such a small, small facility. Um, that's a possibility, but I do think it has to be have an engineered solution because there's too much, there's there's too much water coming down the hill just to say, well, let's let's try to replace it with what it had there before because I don't know what the guy who did the work four years ago or three years ago, four years ago I think did to change the spillway, even if it's an old concrete spillway, I don't know what else they had done. Um, Cause I didn't know there was work on the embankment. So I had suggested that there has to have an engineer take a look at it and give them some advice so that when they go to repair it, they can come through the wetlands commission and they'll have the correct information. Now an engineer should be able, you know, there are some programs called a USGS has stream stats, which gives you the volume of water that can come through for various storms, but that doesn't tell you what the capacity of the spillway should be. And, um, and it may be that the embankment just needs to be armored so that it can't erode like it's eroding now. But it sounds like he's getting loss of, of water through the embankment uh, in a way that is causing the water table to drop faster than it should. Um, what about if we have knowledge of the capacity of the culvert that goes under Sinexit Road? I haven't looked at it. I don't know what the size of it is. Yeah. It's, Have you it's, looked at the size of the culvert? Is it a 36 inch or 24 inch? I believe it's 36, um, Marla. Um, it's, it's, it's significant um, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, never, it, it, you would have to have a tremendous amount of water to exceed that. The water level never rises. Um, up to the to the grade of of Synexit Road. And, oh no, never. Uh, yeah. No, and uh, Mr. Parker, you're you know you were correct um, in that when the the level was decreasing, I went down and I could actually see where the water had found a new path around the existing um, man-made structure, um, but it would be you know, certainly I would need some type of engineering assistance or it's not something that I as a homeowner could do with a shovel and a few bags of gravel. It's, it's, right. it's a significant repair that needs to be made. And I just wanted to get your kind of advice and counsel on what is the proper way to go about that. I would suggest to start maybe with the Eastern Connecticut Conservation District. Um, they have a website. Um, okay. And see if they can provide any homeowners assistance. Um, 
they may or may not be able to work with the soil conservation. Well, it's not the soil conservation service; it's the natural resource conservation service. I don't know what programs still exist. A lot of those programs kind of disappeared as the federal government tightened up its monies. Um, but there may right. be some assistance that they can give to you. Uh, I don't think you need to go to the to D DEP. Um, this is not a dam safety issue. Um, it's not a water diversion issue, in my opinion. It's basically you're trying to get a structure that remains stable during high flows and allows you to maintain the water surface elevation for as long as you can um, with what flows you do get. Right. And um, I do, yeah, so I, I think you do need to have somebody. It's very possible that the solution they might come up with is to rather than having a grassed uh, embankment would be to have an armored embankment with a spillway that controls the outflow with a weir board. But that right. you would need to have an engineer give you an idea as to what size stone, how do you put it in, you know, that right, kind of thing. Right. And you don't have a lot of access down there. It's not easy to get down. Well, I mean, I think you can get down there ultimately, but it's not easy um, to get stone down there. So you need to know what size is stone and, and how far it would have to be placed in order to make sure that the embankment doesn't erode where it contacts natural ground. Right, um, right. So I would, my suggestion would be the Eastern Connecticut Conservation District. They have a website with contact information. That's where it's great. Start. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Marla, have you ever- and Maybe we'll see you back again, but don't go I, doing I a lot so. of stuff because I drive by there all the time. <laughs> no, no, uh, you know, our, you know, our biggest concern is, is that, you know, it's such a great, um, you know, the wildlife and the biodiversity that you see there is, is tremendous. And, um, you know, we have, we have loads of, uh, you know, frogs and turtles and, um, like I, as I mentioned, we had a crane uh, and and her 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 young ones there and ducks and it's it's just a beautiful corridor for for wildlife and I just want to preserve that as habitat for them more than more than anything else. So, by the way, we're looking for commission members. So once you get through this process, consider us. <laughs> oh, I will. I will do. I'm um, volunteering. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I, that's, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, you know, it's such, uh, you know, our, our wetlands are, are so precious to us here in, uh, you know, not only Eastern Connecticut, but, but nationwide. And, um, you know, we should do everything that we can to keep them clean and, and preserve them um, for, our, for generations to come, so. Michael, this is Stuart Peasley here. You might want to check out a website called uh, <clears throat> the pond guy dot com. The pond guy dot com. And all right. They just have resource for stuff. <laughs> that would help you. <laughs> that would help you maybe. It's it's uh, I've got a magazine in front of me. I'm just looking at it for one of the first times, but you know, it's it's uh it's a resource. Well, thank you, Mr. Peasley. I, I appreciate that. Um, any, you know, any information that uh, we can get, um, you know, would be would be very, very helpful. Well, I mean, some people put sprinkler water systems in, you know, where they where there's a decorative uh, sprinkler device shooting water up to provide aeration. What do you think about that, Marla? I don't think they need that there. They're getting uh, groundwater discharge. They don't have a lot of nutrients coming in. They don't have algal blooms. Usually you use aerators when you have a nutrient problem where you have a lot of algae developing if, and it goes anoxic on the bottom, meaning without oxygen. Right. And this pond I don't think is that deep. Um, I don't think it also has the nutrient loads because of the upper watershed is pretty well undeveloped. It's, and it's going to stay that way because the Wyndham Land Trust owns a lot of the, the hillside uh, for, Bo, for um, Bull Hill. Um, so an aerator for this, I, unless you've seen algal blooms in the pond, uh, sometimes geese, Canadian geese, can really cause a nutrient problem, can cause 
Um, that, so I don't encourage a Canadian geese to come into an area. Right. But uh, duck, other ducks, um, like a wood duck box could be really helpful, uh, particularly mm. if it's over the water, you put them in when the, when the water's frozen, you get the stake in, into the open water and that way predators can't get the wood duck young. Um, mm. I can get you some details on that. Um, if you wanted, had any interest in putting in a wood duck box, wood ducks are beautiful. No, we, beautiful yeah, yeah, no, we okay. would, yes, yeah, Marla, we would certainly love to do that because we have, uh, and I realize that, you know, nature is nature, but, um, we en so enjoy the, you know, our native duck population, but we do have a lots of foxes around. And, um, I know that mama fox, um, gets some of the ducklings, so. Mm -hmm. That's why if you put the nest box over water, the ducklings can come out, they, they drop down onto the water, they at least have a chance to escape before getting predated upon right. potentially. Oh no, we're certainly, we'll, we're gonna, we'll certainly install yeah. as many of those as we can, so. Well, if I find the uh, the paperwork that I have for those, uh, I will drop it off at your mailbox. Oh, thank you, Marla. That would be that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your help. You're welcome. All right. Okay, now I've misplaced my agenda. Uh... <laughs> Okay, well, and, moving uh, on. We'll move on to administrative business now. All right, and thank you, Mr. Parker, for um, for for moving uh, moving public comment up. I I appreciate that. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. All right, administrative business uh, review permit application for use of pesticides in state waters uh, for Stella the Stellix uh, on two uh, two ninety four Route one ninety eight. Um, so I don't know if there's, I think it's just a matter of us just being aware of this. Uh, they've put in the application to the state of Connecticut, their, their uh, you know, the use of pesticides. Um, Ashley, do you know where the Stellic property is located? Yeah, it's down, I've been there. Uh, one time with Tina, we were out there you know, a while back, but it's uh, just before the state DOT when you headed to Eastford. Okay. Where 198 and 171 uh, connect. 198, 171. Just so right past that intersection, it's about a quarter mile on the right. Oh, this one is for which, the other. Which way am other? I heading? What road am I on? Uh, no, I don't think that. Plan one seventy one. That would be where one ninety eight and one seventy one combine. On page two, it says location two ninety four route one ninety eight. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The other Stellic residence is a higher number, 198. Okay. Oh, isn't this the one where they wanted to clean the pond? A pond? Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. The, okay. Yeah. That was, that was yeah, the that, pond that was just a runoff. Yeah. The bank, the bank pond. Right. I see it. I got it. Okay. Well, it's not a jurisdiction, it's just a notification, so. And if we have- And they're in a public water supply watershed, so right. I believe. So it's within DEP's control. Right. Okay, agent sign-offs.
So we have an agent sign off for 42 Beaver Dam Road. Fine. And a review and revise inland wetlands agency forms. So we've got. Could actually explain what was in the wetlands agent. We got a lot of stuff in our packet. Could yeah. you tell us what that's about? Um, from, I got something from Killingly Engineering. Yeah, that was an agent sign off. Um, I think there was two or three. I wrote agent sign off on the top. So you knew that I had just signed off on it, but I gave you like the maps and everything that went along with it. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Here they are. So we're looking at the um, forms now, right? Yep. Oh, okay. So Ashley, I'm sorry, before, I'm not ready to the forms. Killing the engineering's application? Yep. That was for a septic system replacement? Correct. And they had NDBH approval for that? Yes. All right, never mind. And, and then, then there was the retaining we wall. Quickly go through the wetlands agent approval. Yep. Mark, can we quickly go through the wetlands agent approvals? Because okay. it's kind of new for Ashley. The second one that was in there was um, Barton Banton construction yep. on 42 Beaver Dam LLC owner. Yeah. 42 Beaver Dam Road. And it says add a retaining wall. So, Ashley, where was this retaining wall? Um, it was. Go ahead. What was your. Um, I can try and pull it up on the GIS, but it was down by the water. I'm not sure exactly how many feet back. Okay. And it looks like it's already constructed. Is yeah. this an after the fact? Um, okay. Yeah, it was like three quarters okay. of the way done and someone had called about it, so. Okay. Did you notice if there was any problem in the lake? Had there been any erosion going into the lake? No. Okay, all right. Then I'm fine with it. Sorry to interrupt, Mark. Yep, that's fine. All right, so that's that's that one, and then the um, okay, the your retaining wall. Uh, Okay. And I think it was just those two, right, Ashley? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. So we're good. We're good on the uh, the wetlands agent sign off. So now we'll move on to uh, Revise, review and revise the inland wetlands agency forms. So we've got a use permitted as of right form or non regulated use. And we have an application for permit form. Was there another one or was that it? That was it. Yep. Okay. On the use permitted as of right form on page three, the application permissions and certifications. Um, I think it would be 
appropriate to have the paragraph that's on the second page, on the page four, brought over to the signature page. But that would mean that you'd have to change various um, adjustments of sizing. So I'm wondering whether or not providing one page for a detailed project description and just putting the application permissions and certifications on the last page so that the, the, the information about corporations gets put with the signature block. Right now it's separated. Yeah. So they don't even see it. Yeah, that's fine. And then, yeah, and typically the agency response is either approved or denied it doesn't need like two or three lines. So if you run out of space for the part four, you can shrink that down. You've got pretty big, bold, you know, uh, text. So if yep. you shrink down the text on that, um, it'll give you the space to add in all the application permissions and certifications. Okay. I don't have any other, pro I don't have any other problems with this is a very nice, use permitted as a bright non-regulated use form. It makes it easy. Bill Rowinski, I think it's pretty I, simple and straightforward. On the first page on both forms, uh, I believe we discussed that in a reference for number six. It says section and seven, seven and eight, and it doesn't refer to where those sections are found. Yes, you're right. I just saw that in my notes. I will correct that or add that in for you. Yeah. That's for both application forms. Yep. Yes. Okay. Is, is the issue there, Bill, is that eight is not shown? Uh, neither section seven or eight is shown. I believe that's referring to the wetlands regulations. Oh, okay. So you're saying it should read wetlands regulations? Yes, yeah, yeah, some reference to that. <clears throat> So if Ashley, you could make those final changes and, and then we'll have it um, on the agenda for next month for us to final, make a final approval and um, adoption of, of use of the new forms. So Mark, she's got for the individual permit application form five pages. And I think she can shrink that to four by combining page five and four, adjusting sure. the text size for the um, the owner information, you know, about the corporation owner information, I would shrink that down smaller and adjust the, uh, maybe adjust the text size or the spacing between the paragraphs so that you can get the part four on page four. Cause you got a huge amount of space at the top of page four that's right. not even used. So I, yep. I think you, if you play around with the fonts and the and the spacings for the um, for the lines for the paragraphs, you can probably get both of those. So it'll be a four-page document, just like the use permitted as a right non-regulated use application. Okay. Do you see that, Mark? Yeah. On, yep. On page four and five. Right. Yep. So what I'm saying is once we see the final project product at next month's meeting, we'll we'll adopt it. One one question to you, Ashley, on the yep. application number in the front first page. Yep. Uh, can you put in a receipt date? Sure. Or a, a submission date? Yep. So that we know when it comes into the office. Yes. For the application, where the block for the application number? Yep. Um, 
one other thing. There was something else I was thinking of. And I can't remember what it is. I like the way you've laid it out. I, I have to tell you, it's, I think it's, it's much easier to look at. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what is not on here is the fee. Yes. You have, can you en um, enlarge that little block on for where the application number is on the first page and put um, fee payment date? So sure. you put smaller, smaller font so we know what the cost was that was charged. Yep. And, and um, when they paid it. Yep, I will do that. Well, thank you for all your work, Ashley. So you will not be at the next meeting? Is I will not. Okay. You have one, one more week? Yes, one more week. All right. But I will get these done and then leave them for the next person. Um, I'm hoping to help transition whoever they hire, you know, to kind of bring them up to speed on everything that's going on and where everything stands. So I'm not going to leave uh, the office totally hanging. I'll do my best. So, so could so you, you or will you or Amy or maybe Christine French um, set up the Zoom meeting for us uh, next month? Or how do you want to handle that? Yes, um, I will talk to Crystal and see what would be Crystal, the best yeah. way to, to get it started. But uh, it might be Crystal. She might just turn it on, you know, and walk away until you guys are done. But We'll definitely get somebody to start it if you guys want to keep Zoom for next month. So you're leaving the town's employee? I am. So um, do you know if the selectmen have already started a search for a new agent? Um, I know that they put out the posting on Thursday. So I'm not sure what they've received for applications yet. So are they still keeping it a combined zoning enforcement and wetlands agent? Um, they have it listed as three separate right now. And then if there's the right candidate to either combine one, two or all three of them. Okay. And how many hours are they talking about? Are they talking about for how many hours for wetlands? Um, I believe it's 10. I can look. How many hours for zoning? Yep, give me one second and I'll pull it up. Sure. The reason why I'm asking this is um, Dan Malo is working. He had applied for the position before you got it. Yep. He decided not to take it and he came, went to Thompson and okay. for their as their conservation officer yep. he got 20 hours and in thompson that's considered full time and they gave them a benefits package oh okay um but that's not enough to live off of right and 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 i don't know whether or not he's not i don't think he's really that interested in wetlands but he might be interested in zoning yep. so um that's why i was asking Sure. Yep. So it's 15 hours for zoning enforcement officer, 10 hours for wetlands, um, and they also posted a 10 hours land use clerk. Um, so, you know, there's an opportunity to combine one or two, uh, just depends upon experience and, and, you know, who applies. So um, if that person so is interested, they, go ahead. They did all three. Would they be full-time position? Yeah. It would be like what I am right now. Okay. So they got you as zoning enforcement officer, wetlands agent, and land use clerk, all three of those right now? Yeah. Yeah, I do everything. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. No. Okay. So, um, Mark, what are we going to do for next month's agenda? 
How are we going to develop that? There's nobody there. Um, I guess you and I, or, you know, or either you and I, or you and, or me and Bill, um, you know, the secretary, you're, you're the secretary, right? <laughs> so, right. you know, yeah, we'll, we'll need to, you and I will need to put our heads together and just draft up the, uh, the, uh, the agenda. And, uh, do we know what and, they put in the budget for the wetlands? How many hours? Because that comes off the selectmen's uh, budget, not off the wetlands budget. Right. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. All right. I suspect this is going to need to be a meeting with, uh, with uh, first selectman Swan to talk about exactly what is there. And is he, would he ever consider um, combining with another town to do certain functions so that the person gets a full-time position? I know it didn't work with the with the prior administration for the building inspector, and that was too bad because Terry was uh, was working for both towns, and I they just had a misunderstanding, I think, about as to who was going to pay the benefits package. Um, they didn't really share it equally. Uh, Thompson got the better end of the deal on that one, um, but this is going to be problematic to, for us. If they are only do offering 10 hours, it's hardly anybody's going to want to do that job. And Ashley, you've done a good job. Thank you. Thank you for all of your help are, and help. Are you going into. Year. Yeah. Well, are you going to go into something similar or are you changing careers altogether? Nope. I'm sticking with the same thing. I'm going to the town of Vernon. Okay. So, so in Vernon, is that a full time position? Yes. And what's the functions? Um, so I will be their town planner, but then also wetlands agent. Town planner? Yes. So you're certified as a planner? Um, not yet, but they are willing to take me on and know that I will get the, the certification within the next year. Okay, because Vernon is a lot more complicated than, than the Eastern Connecticut towns. Um, because it's got a lot of development, it's got a lot of, uh, doesn't have as many open spaces as you do here. Right. Uh, oh, boy. OJT. <laughs> what's that mean? OJT, what's that? On the job training. Oh, right. <laughs> Well, good luck to you for the future for you, Ashley. Thank you. So, Marla, do we want to invite the uh, selectman, uh, Jay, Jay Swan, to next month's meeting, or should you and I see if we can meet with him in in the interim before next meeting? I think we need to have him come to the meeting because if you and I meet with him, that constitutes a meeting under FOIA. Oh, right, right, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's so, got to he's got to come to the meeting, or even if we hold a special meeting, find out what's going on. Um, so we won't have anybody to develop the agenda for next next month. Right, that's why it falls on you and I. I guess, yeah. So, um, and I and I did it a little bit when when Tina had left before anybody else had come in, but that was really difficult because there, but at least there was somebody in the building office that would take the applications. They don't even right. have that now. I mean, the way they've set it up. So he's got to figure out how he's going to handle applications coming in and right. how they're going to get logged in and how they're going to get processed. So before, before Ashley came on in between Tina and Ashley, um, didn't uh, they go into uh, the town clerk's office and Christine French queued them up for us? The application. She did, but then they hired Mike, Mike okay. Camano. Yeah. And and he was a contractor. Right. And he did that for a while. Okay. So. So, this is going to be problematic. Yeah. So if any applications come in in the next three or four weeks, yeah, we'll, we'll need have to, to go to the town clerk. Town clerk's going to have to stamp them in. 
right. put them in a, in in the mailbox. And um, Ashley, when's your last day? Uh, the nineteenth. So I have time next week that I can talk with you. Yep. Um, about where the log books are and where the files yeah. have all been stored because I don't know if they've changed from when Tina was there. Yep. Okay. All right, I'll try to do that sometime next week. I don't have time this week, so. Um, what's a good day? Tuesday? Um, yeah, week? so well, Tuesday is my last day, which is the 19th, um, so. so that's probably to be be Monday. Best. Yeah, Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe it'll be Tuesday because Monday is usually the day I have to work in Woods in Thompson. So okay. All right. Yeah, Tuesday is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the so then the week the week before the next meeting, Marla, then I'll just you and I I'll, I'll get together with you and either over the phone or whatever, and we'll make sure that all the new applications are queued up on the agenda and uh, and, you know, that we queue up uh, a time to talk with Jay Swan about uh, our expectations and needs for, you know, a wetlands agent, and ZEO, land use person. Yeah, so. Okay. All right, good. If you need any help, Marla, let me know. Thanks, Stu. Right, um, I'm just not sure how it's going to, how it's going to work because um technically any application that comes in is going to have to go to the town clerk for being stamped in because right. there won't be any normal business hours so she has to take and stamp those in and put them somewhere put like what they did in the past if it was christine or it was the town clerk they would stamp it in and then put it in the mailbox for the in the wetlands commission then i would go in and look to see what was there but then there's nobody answering the phones Nobody's taking any complaints. Um, and that's gonna be problematic. The fact that they only give 10 hours, that's not gonna be enough to dice anybody to come in unless they're giving a really good salary. And we can we uh, look at the possibility of a contractor like Mike D'Amato in the interim? Well, that's the selectman's office. We can't, we don't have any monies for staffing. It's all in the selectman's office. This mm -hmm. all falls to the responsibility of the first selectman. And they're the ones that set their budget for what the staffing levels are gonna be. So if it starts to fall apart, it's gonna fall on the selectman's office's issues. Right. Been there before done that didn't like it at yeah. all yeah because i'm secretary doesn't mean i'm recording secretary doesn't mean that i am correct the, right i i my functions basically by the bylaws are just to fill in when either the chair and the vice chair aren't there and i assume on my own and it's not in the bylaws i assume responsibility for taking notes during the meeting to make sure that when the minutes are done that the motions are recorded properly uh, who's who first who second whether it was unanimous or not um right. i try to make sure what the start and the end times were and whoever was identified on the meeting is, is shown in the minutes that's what i've been doing is making sure that the minutes are are generated in a fairly accurate condition of course the rest of you can do that but i consider yeah. that my responsibility to look at yeah as the secretary, but. And, um, and also doing that. Uh, and, and, uh, and assisting with, with uh, official letters. So like if we needed to send out a letter uh, to either the, the selectmen or, or an organization or whatever from the Woodstock Inland Wetlands Commission, um, you know, yeah, the chairman, I would sign off on it, but you would help me write that up as secretary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Existential issue. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Anything else on the agenda? Uh, no. It looks subdivision regulations in the packet. We got something on that. Okay. That's good. I don't know what that's about. 
Um, a while ago, you guys had asked what the subdivision regulation said, what was required for wetlands on a map. So I was just giving that to you so you were aware. Um, I know they're not updating the regulations right now, but if you know ever had concerns or wanted to give them input on additional items for wetlands, you could do that. So in looking at this, this is only applies to major subdivisions of four lots or, or more. What about lots one through three? Do they require wetlands mapping on those? Uh, I believe so. I believe in the, it says in the minor subdivisions um, that the same things are required. Says the requirements listed in part one and applicable parts of part two shall be included for minor subdivision applications. And then it goes on to talk about major subdivision. Additional details shall be shown on the subdivision plans, but that's reflected for major subdivision lot for with four lots or more. Uh, I'm gonna have to look at the, the subdivision ranks. I know. Are we going to lose the chair of the subdivision, the Planning and Zoning Commission, because he was running for office? Um, I think he said he would at least finish out his term, which is until next year, unless things got mm -hmm. too overwhelming. But um, I think the plan is to at least finish out his term. Okay. He, he's his the elections in November, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. His chair seat is up next November. Oh, in, in one year. Oh, a year from this November. Correct, right. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So are we proposing that these uh, regulations be amended? I'm not recommending anything yet until I read them. Okay. The only thing that I could, could see that, you know, it, since we don't have an agent, we don't have any clerical staff, um, I don't think that we can take the effort to do plan modifying the wetlands regulations like to change the fee. I don't think it, the town's just gonna have to bear the brunt of the cost of whatever legals have to go out. Mm. Um, and I don't, I don't know who's gonna draft those, the legal notices. I mean, for any decisions that we make in the interim while there's no agent. So, cause there's a process. I don't know what the process is in Woodstock. I know what it is in Thompson um how to get legal notices published but i don't know how they do it here i don't know what requirements they have for um notification of stonebridge press what kinds of uh, purchase order requests have to go in what the paperwork is for that um, unless they can give us part uh, some assistance through the building clerk and i don't know um i don't if, think if the building clerk would do that well, unfortunately, the way it works in town is they, uh, unless she's unionized, they can yeah, modify her job description. Yeah. So they could go about trying to modify the job description for that. Um, I don't know. It's gonna, this is going to be problematic again. So. By the way, uh, Darcy Winter, I talked to her. She's the only one there in the wetlands program. There's nobody else. And they are hiring more people, but they haven't hired anybody to the wetlands program. Uh, young people don't really have a, a lot of experience yet. Um, Darcy said that Yukon Clear, if you go to Yukon Clear, the, there's a portion on land use training um, and I can send you the links. I have it in, in the town of Thompson. She sent me the link. I could forward you her email. And they have some really good um, webinars that are, are recordings um, for land use commissioners, primarily geared towards planning and zoning, 
but it does include some wetland stuff. Um, this was in response to a public act in last year uh, where OPM was required to establish a training program for, for planning and zoning uh, commissioners, or they called them land use commissioners, but they didn't include wetlands. They only were including planning and zoning in it. But when you look on the Yukon Clear site, that's where the wetlands training program is now. Um, and they also have all these other uh, free training uh, for BAP reading and you know um, processing a hearing and processing applications, that kind of thing. So it, I can send you guys the link for that. Um, and at least you can have some kind of education. Um, and Ashley, this would be good for you because you're probably gonna wanna go through all that stuff anyways. The, right. the Yukon Clear training, if you haven't yep. done it already. Okay. I am bummed, right. I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm kind of speechless myself. <laughs> Okay, so the next next meeting will be August. Uh, what is it? It'll so be August first. August first. First Monday, right? Yep. Seven o'clock. And, we'll, uh, and yeah, talk to Crystal about it, Ashley. If she could get you know get it all queued up on Zoom for us. Yep, I will do that for you. I'm just going to say there's a slight chance that I might not be able to make that meeting. Uh -oh. so, so I'm going to go help my son move, um, but I don't have any dates yet. It'll be sometime that week. I'll try to set the, set the date aside, but I'll. Yeah. Well, that's a good convenient way that we can, can't have a quorum so that we don't have to have an agenda. We just right. put a cancellation notice. <laughs> right. But actually, so if, if we you... ain't meeting. <laughs> if, if Ashley, if you have an opportunity to have like a, a little exit meeting with Jay Swan or anything, let him know that we request his uh, his uh, attendance at the, the August 1st meeting um, sure. for two reasons. One, to talk to him about uh, filling your slot. Uh, and two, uh, one of our members, Bill Rowinski, may not be there. So we will need Jay there to, <laughs> to conduct business. Sure. <laughs> I will do that. So here's the other problem is who's going to run the Zoom meeting if Ashley doesn't do it? Yeah, so Ashley that means was Crystal's saying going to have to run it. Right. Ashley was saying that Crystal might like get it open and then just kind of walk away and then come back at the end of the meeting and, you know, shut it all down. So Can't do that because she's the host. She's the one who lets people into the meeting when somebody shows up. Right. So, um, and I've never done, I've never really done hosting of a meeting. I don't have the capacity with my, my bandwidth is, is too narrow to right. host the meeting because I can't do any screen sharing. Crystal, as long as we're in Zoom. I think Crystal could. We may have to go back. Sorry, I'm sorry, Stuart. I think Crystal could do it. She, she's, I know she's done it with other uh, activities, so. Yes, Ashley, ask Crystal if she would please do it. Um, yep. And you can, you know, and you know, if she needs Jay Swan's approval, then yeah, tell uh, let Jay know that we need to have, you know, him, someone in his office under his authority and purview to to run the meeting for to open the Zoom meeting for us and to sure. get it queued up. So. Yep. <clears throat> so we're still planning a Zoom meeting for next month. Is that correct, Mark? Don't know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but, but I don't know, but maybe, I don't know. We may have to do it in person because if there's person. nobody really to handle the Zoom meeting. Right. That's the other alternative, yeah. But then Jay's okay. going to have to be there to op open up the, op usually it's the wetlands agent that gets has the, you know, the doors open and Ashley won't well, be there, so he's going to have to be there. It. If we schedule it, they'll they'll open it they can they can make it work who's they yeah staff okay I don't make assumptions like let's, that anymore all right let's let's have the august meeting right. be in person at the town hall so um 
Ashley, if you could notify um, the selectman's office and and uh, you know the building staff that that we'd like to have the uh, the wetlands uh, meeting room uh, scheduled. Yep, I will do that. For August first, seven. Amy, are you okay with that? You're I mute. prefer no. I prefer in person meetings. I'm not a Zoom fan, so I'm good. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, good. So yeah, well, when we write up the agenda, the heading will say that this will be held in person at the town hall. Very good. All right. Move to adjourn. Oh, that would be in the, um, sorry. That would be in the, the really large room. Which room is that? I can't remember the number, but. B, the large room. I yeah. think it's B. <clears throat> that we should request it be for that. Yeah, if that's what the large room is, I can't remember. It's either one or B or something. But... We usually meet in A, I believe, and B is the big one, and C is the other little one. Okay. okay. I'll, so... second, I'll second the motion to yep. adjourn. So, yeah, so I actually just asked the selectmen if we can have uh, the large room B for August 1st, 7 o'clock. Okay, yep. will do. Uh, motion has been made by Barla Butts, seconded by Birowinski to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. At, oh. Time. Uh, nine what? <laughs> 9.15. All right, 9.15. Very good.